Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Math 100. We are going to study Chapter 8 today. And in fact, we will begin Chapter 8 by going into Section 8.1. The topic of 8.1 is apportionment. And this refers to a uh, calculating the number of congressional seats for each state. And that is, of course, the primarily model. But of course, it has many applications. Part of the story is a story between two men. These two men uh, standing right behind me. So who is this guy? Uh, the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. And who is this guy? He was made known, uh, very famous, by a recent musical. His name is Alexander Hamilton. Yes, that's him. So. Uh, there were, uh, these people are not very good friends with each other. In fact, they were very much of political enemies. And so that drama takes place within this lesson on section 8.1. So let's look at congressional apportionment. Okay, the topic of section 8.1 is apportionment problem. Now the word apportionment could mean many different things. It has to do with distributing or splitting up a finite uh, set of things to different people, right? Uh, so this, uh, the subtitle of this topic is a tale of two founding fathers, a tale of two founders, okay? And I already mentioned this involves Jefferson and Hamilton. Now today, uh, we will actually try this problem and see, you will find out what the problem is and we will come up with a solution maybe a couple of solutions and see what kind of problems may arise. So I wanna sort of a recreate history and uh, I want you to see firsthand what could go wrong and what we should do about it. All right, so here is the main question that we are going to address. Uh, this is in red. I think I wanna do this in yellow or red, uh, should be in red, Ah, not dotted, come on. Okay, so the main question here is this. How many representatives or congressional seats should each state or colony get in the new what? Well, back then, Jefferson and, uh, and the people like Washington, Jefferson, and Hamilton were discussing this problem in terms of their new Congress, okay? In particular, you know, we have a Congress that has uh, two chambers. One is the Senate and the other is the House of Representatives. Okay, so this was the case. The Senate has a fixed number. Uh, basically, they have two senators from each state. So that's already fixed. There's no problem there. But the apportionment problem has to do with the number of congressional seats in the House of Representatives, uh, because that should depend on the number of people they represent. Uh, that is the population of each state. All right, so that is um, in the next slot. Uh, we will put the number of people population of each state should determine how many seats each state has or should have, right? So we'll try a smaller version because we don't wanna deal with 50 states that would make the problem a lot more complicated. All right, so we are going to have a fictitious um, house which has four states represented. We will call them A, B, C, and D uh, because I am not very creative. All right, so to see what the problem is, you know, because I mean, what could be the problem? All you have to do is to divide the number of, um, the total number of seats by uh, in, in, in proportion to the uh, number of people in each state, right? Yeah, well, it doesn't um, turn out to be so simple. So we will try a smaller version to see what the problem is and how to solve it, maybe, okay? All right, so suppose we have a four state country, the states are called A, B, C, and D, and we have 28 seats in the assembly or council or in the Congress of this uh, fictitious state or uh, country, right? Now the question here is again, how many seats should be apportioned to each state? Thus the name apportionment or the term apportionment problem. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this uh, and just start imagining about these states, right? So we have a state A with 310 people. That's kind of a small state. And then state B has a much, uh, it has a lot more people, 1,936 people. State C is small. State D is the largest at 2,744. You could see that state D 
has almost half of the population of the entire country. Because if you add, it, add up these numbers, uh, they add up to 5,830 people. Okay. Now, again, this doesn't have to be congressional apportionment. Uh, it could be that a school district district has 580, sorry, 5,830 students. And these are the four schools uh, with those numbers of students respectively, right? So this has a lot of applications, not just in politics. But how do we apportion a finite number of people, in this case, 28 representatives, so that uh, we these people can represent the um, the uh, each states uh, each of the four states fairly. Okay, so the first thing you do is this. What what is the first thing you should do? Maybe you can think about this. Okay. Well, we have almost six thousand people to be represented by twenty eight people, right? So in particular, we want to find out how many people should be represented by each of these representatives. Don't you think that's a great idea? Yeah, so what you do is this. Uh, let's, um, let's go ahead and do this calculation to find what is known as the standard divisor. All right, so this is the total population divided by, I'm going to use this notation here, divided by the number of representatives representatives. In this case, it's 28, right? So uh, this would be, uh, in this case, 5,830 people divided by 28 representatives. And this comes down to 208.214, or approximately 208 people per representative. Does that make sense? So in other words, if you are a representative occupying one of these 28 seats, um, ideally you should be representing about 201 people, right? Okay, that's the idea. All right, now from there, we find what is called the standard quota for each state. And so this is the population of the state. Let, let me write it this way. Um, you take one state and you, you find the, the state population the number of people living in that state, and you divide it by D, the number that we just calculated, which is a standard divisor, okay? So does that make sense? If you do this, this will give you exactly how many representatives you should have, right? Because this is the number of people that each representative is to represent. If you divide the state population by that number, that should give you exactly how many um, representatives that state should have. Now let's go ahead and do this, okay? And then we will see a problem, all right? Let's go ahead and look at this. And um, right now, just ignore the fact that we are going to um, apply Hamilton's method in the first table, but don't worry about this yet, okay? So these numbers, the number of, the number of people in each state, uh, each of the four states, A, B, C, D, are written right here. Okay, so how do you find the quota? The standard quota is this divided by, what was that? 208.214, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to carry on uh, these calculations to a couple of decimal places, okay? Uh, and you'll see why that is true. So uh, for instance, for the first one, what is the first answer here? Uh, that would be 208, sorry, um, 310 divided by 208.214. And that's going to give you about 1.489 um, representatives, okay? Next, we have 1936 divided by 208.214, blah, blah, blah. That turns out to be 9.298 and so on, okay? So maybe I can do this. All right, next. Uh, this doesn't work out very well. Maybe I will create another thing here. All right, 840 divided by 208.214, and that's going to come to 4.034 and so on. And then the next one is going to be 2,744 divided by 208.214, and this is going to give you 13.179 and so on. These are the quotas. These are the standard quotas 
okay, one quota for each state. And this quota for that state represents precisely the number of people, the representatives that state should have. Okay, now if you divide five, 1,830 by exactly this number, um, the sum is going to be 28. And this is going to be uh, a fixed number. Where did that come from? Oh, that's exactly the number of all these representatives we um, add up. OK, that would be 28. OK, so according to the calculations, in an ideal world, state A should have 1.489 representatives. B should have 9.298 representatives, and so on immediately you see the problem. Okay, what is the problem? You cannot have 1.489 people. All right. So here is the problem. Very easy to detect, very easy to identify this problem, right? The problem is this number D was not a very nice number because fractions or a division doesn't always give you a very nice number. So the standard divisor was a fraction. Uh, it is a rational number because it's a ratio of two integers, but this is a uh, decimal number, not a very nice decimal number. And therefore, when you divide each population by this not so nice decimal number, the quota itself for each state is not a nice number. In fact, most of these are almost always going to be a decimal number, right? That is the problem. We can't have 9.298 representatives. So let's go ahead and write down what we just said. Um, the problem is that the um, standard quotas are also decimal numbers, not very nice decimal numbers. But it doesn't matter if it's a nice decimal or not. And you, even if, if the uh, standard quota happens to be 3.5, you still can't find 3.5 people, right? So how would you solve this, okay? Do you have any idea of how to solve this? Let me put it this way. If, okay, maybe I should rewrite this. Um, we can't have fractions of representatives. All right, so the problem is, exactly this, right? Humans come in whole. Representatives are people who come in whole persons and not uh, fractions. So uh, if you were one of the founding uh, people of this world, I'm not gonna call them founding fathers because they may be founding mothers if we were to start a country today, but um, wh wh what'd you do? What, how would you decide? Okay, so like state A should have one or two representatives. B, maybe nine, because 9.2 cl is closer to nine than to 10, maybe C should have only four because 4.034 is very close to four, right? So that's the problem. Okay, so um, what would be a good uh, way to do this? Okay, think about this. Have you thought about this? <laughs> okay, uh, everybody agrees that uh, at least this whole number part, like one, nine, okay, let me go ahead and write this. Uh, one, nine, What am I doing? I'm just writing the uh, number before the uh, decimal point, right? So you have 1.4 something, so it's one is a minimum. Okay, And in fact, this is called a minimum quota. Let me go ahead and write this down. The minimum quota is the, uh, the part before the decimal point. So that's the whole number part, one, nine, four, 13, okay? I think you would agree that each state should get at least this number, okay? And in fact, that is one, uh, one of the statements called the uh, fairness criteria, okay? If the apportionment is supposed to be fair, at least each state should get the number that precedes the decimal number, right? So one, not a decimal point, one, nine, four, 13. These are the minimum number of representatives that these states should have, okay? Agree with that? I think most of us would agree with that. In other words, state A should not have zero representative. State B should not have like three representatives because the, the minimum quota or the quota, the standard quota is 9.298, okay? B, to be fair, should have at least nine, maybe 10 representatives. Okay, but not 11 or 12 or, you know, 20, right? All right, so let's go ahead and add up these numbers. 
What do you have when you add up these numbers? One plus nine plus four plus 13. That looks like 27. Okay, how many seats are available? You're given that we had 28. Where is that? Right here, okay? So that means we have one extra seat to be given away to one of the states. Which lucky, fortunate state will have that one extra seat? So let me go ahead and, and write this. So we need one more seat to be filled by one of the states. All right, which state should deserve one? Just look at these numbers and tell me. I think the easiest solution is, what do you think? Yeah, just to look at the, maybe look at the parts that we didn't use, the, num the, uh, the, the part of the quota after, uh, after the decimal point. So here it's, yeah, go, let me go ahead and write down 0.489. I'm going to call this number a remainder. So, you know, division often produces a remainder. I am not using the word remainder in the traditional sense. Okay, uh, right here, I am talking about the remainder as in the, um, the part after the decimal point. Okay, so ignore what comes before the decimal point, like these one, nine, four, 13 numbers. Let's go ahead and write the numbers after the decimal point. Okay, does it give a clue? Yeah, uh, I think you would come up with the solution, a simple solution saying, why don't we give that one extra seat to the state with the biggest remainder? Because that is the closest to the next number, right? So naturally, I think we would like to award that extra seat to A because A has the biggest fraction part or the biggest remainder after the minimum quota, right? After all, I mean, if you have to increase one of these numbers, not all of them, but just exactly one of these four numbers, you want to give it to the um, state that has the biggest remainder part, right? Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is the biggest remainder out of the four. So we're going to give that extra seat to state A. So state A ends with two. Everybody else will get the minimum quota. All right, so this is the special number. And of course, adding one, you will get 28. Yay, that is simple and nice, right? Okay, guess who came up with this idea? He was one of the founding fathers, okay? And he became famous with the musical recently. And what is his name? What is his name? Alexander Hamilton, that is his name. All right, so he came up with this idea and this, method is now called Hamilton's method. All right, so here is the idea of the uh, Hamilton's method. Let me go ahead and write this down. Um, I think this would be a good summary to write down. All right, in Hamilton's method, each state should get um, at least its minimum quota. Okay, that is the part before the decimal point. Then if any seats, let's say if any more seats are available, they should go to states with biggest remainders um, after the decimal point. Okay, so that is called Hamilton's method. And it is very simple and very easy and you almost want to say, what's wrong with it? You know, uh, who would even argue or dispute this? I mean, this is nice, simple, easy to understand, right? Okay, then we get this. Let's go back and review this quickly. Um, we first find the uh, D, which is a standard quota. That's how many uh, people should be represented by each representative. That is the total population divided by the number of representatives or number of seats in the Congress. And in this case, it was 208. Now, to find the standard quota for each state, we divide the state population by D because that is the number of representatives each state should have. This number is called the standard quota, which is often, you know, for each state, which is often a decimal number. So under Hamilton's method, we find the minimum quota, which is the number, the, the part before the decimal point, one, nine, four, 13. Add them up. This number is almost always strictly less than 
the total number of seats available. In this case, we ended up with 27 by adding the minimum quota, not 28. That means we have one extra seat. But according to Hamilton's method, that seat should go to the state with the largest remainder. After all, this state A is closest to the next whole number. So state A will get that one extra and coveted extra seat. One becomes two here. All the other states are as is, nine, four, and 13. Now, of course, because we added one extra to state A, the total sum will be 28, which is exactly what we wanted, right? So state with the biggest remainder, state A, in this case, is going to get that extra seat. Get that? Great. Not too bad, right? That is the uh, beginning of, only the beginning of the apportionment problem. All right, now let me tell you, just to, to tell you, before we go to the next method, which is called Jefferson's method, I want to point out something that could happen with Hamilton's method. And hopefully you will see a, a little problem here when, when you find out what could happen to it. All right, so this is the um, initial calculation of um, the number of representatives for each, C, each of the states A, B, C, and D. Okay, remember these numbers, two, nine, four, and 13. Okay, now, suppose that maybe a year or two later, the country decided to add one more seat. So you used to have 28 representatives, and they say, hey, that's, uh, you know, not packing the Supreme Court, but pack the uh, assembly or pack our Congress. We want to have one more. So now we have 29 seats instead of 28 because we are just adding one more a seat. Okay, get that? So now which state will get that one extra seat that was newly added to the uh, Congress of this four state country? This is what's gonna happen. We're gonna have to recalculate D. Okay, obviously, right? Because um, D now is 5,830, same population divided by 29 now. This is the number of people each representative should represent. And this is 201.0349. Okay, so that is our new standard divisor based on the fact that now we have 29 seats, okay? Again, there is no difficult mathematical operations going on. All we are doing is really division, right? Okay, so now we divide each of these populations by D the newly found standard divisor, which is this thing. All right, so the first number I write for the standard quota is for state A, 310 divided by this number now, turns out to be 1.542, okay? The next one, 1936 divided by this D is 9.630. 840 divided by D is going to be 4.178, and finally, 2744 divided by 13.649, uh, sorry, 2744 divided by D is 13.649. Great, they add up to 29. So if you allow fractional uh, representatives, this will be the happy end. It doesn't work that way because people can't appear in fractions. So the minimum quota, remember this is the number before these decimal points. So this, these will be one, nine, four, 13. Not bad. This is gonna add up to 27. Okay, does everybody get where I got the minimum quotas? Yeah, it's one, nine, four, 13. These are basically the um, numbers before you see the numbers before the decimal point, right? Okay, so let's focus on the remainders now. Four, uh, 0 0.542, 0 0.630, 0 0.178. All I'm doing is copying these from you know this, um, these numbers. All right, so which has the biggest uh, number of seats? Oh, by the way, uh, so, so far we have, according to the minimum quota and the total sum of the minimum quota, we have 27 uh, representatives. We are supposed to have 29. So we actually could give away two more seats, right? So which are the two states that would get these two extra seats? Oh, I think they are two. Sometimes you could get uh, one state with two extra, but probably not. All right, look at the largest. 
of the remainders. This is the largest, D, okay? So D is gonna add one to the, uh, the minimum quota. The next biggest remainder is for B, uh, 0 0.630. So this is gonna add, you know, maybe to be consistent, I should have said here, we add one, right? And then that uh, seat, uh, state A had two, and then you had nine, four, 13. Over here, because we added now, a added one extra seat to the Congress, um, I can have two more people um, after we decided what the minimum quotas are. And those two seats will go to state B and state D uh, by the virtue uh, of the fact that uh, these are the two biggest remainders. All right, so the seats will remain one for A, you add one to nine, so this will become 10. Uh, seat C does not get any extra seats. Seat D will, because of this number, which is the biggest remainder, this is gonna become 14. Since I added two numbers, these will add up to 29. No problem, right? We got 29. But did you see what happened to these states? Now, these are the same states, same population, right? What happened is in the initial application of Hamilton's method, state A had two representatives, okay? Now we added one extra seat. And because we added one to the total number of seats in the Congress, B and D picked up one, but look, A lost one, okay? <laughs> What in the world? So compared to the previous uh, assignments or apportionment, A ended up losing one seat. Now remember, this used to be 29413. So uh, in the former apportionment, this was 29413. So A ended up losing a seat, B ended up gaining a seat, C did not get or lose a seat, D, um, ended up getting one extra seat, all right? And so, of course, this, you know, becomes zero. There's no change um, over, well, no, 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 that's not true. This will be plus one is the change because the number of seats became from 28 to 29. So definitely there's one additional seat. But what happens is if you live in state A, you wouldn't like it, okay? Now, why wouldn't you like it? That's because by adding one seat to the total number of Congress, state A actually ended up losing a seat, okay? That doesn't seem fair. And that's because, uh, and this happened because all these remainders sort of act in some strange, um, non-predictable ways, okay? And so that was one of the problems in Hamilton's method. Unfortunately, maybe fortunately, Hamilton did not know this could happen. Neither did Jefferson or Washington or anybody else who was alive at the time when Hamilton invented his Hamilton's method. Okay, now this thing is called, what we just saw is called the Alabama paradox. And the reason it's called the Alabama, Alabama paradox is not because I use the letter A, uh, but because this actually happened to the state of Alabama, right? A state, so what is the Alabama paradox? It is this phenomenon in which a state loses a seat when the total number of seats increases. It is hard to imagine this could actually happen, but it does, as you can see right here, right? Because of the decimal um, numbers that appear with division. So it happened in, to Alabama in 1880 under Hamilton's method. See, in the, in the course of history of the United States, there was a time uh, about half a century where the states actually used, I mean, the government actually used Hamilton's method to apportion the uh, House of Representative members. But in 1880, Alabama lost a seat because the number of, the total number of seats, the size of the Congress increased. Alabama thought this wasn't fair, especially right after they lost the Civil War. Like how could they lose the war and lose a seat, even if, even when the total House of Representatives became bigger, okay? And that's because they used Hamilton's method. And so that didn't go well with Alabama or the rest of the country because it could happen to any of these states, right? So they discovered that Hamilton met Hamilton's method is flawed and they did not want to use that anymore after that. 
Okay, but the story actually goes way back here. Hamilton's method was a cool thing. And I said it was used in the 1880s. Okay, well, look, 1880, this is 100 years after, more than 100 years after the um, founding of the, the United States, right? Uh, and I did not say Hamilton's method was used for 100 years. In fact, Hamilton's method did not get used for the first several decades of the country. Instead, something else happened. So what happened in the history of U the United States at the very beginning uh, in terms of apportionment? Okay, I will tell you more about this human drama, human drama involving another man called Jefferson, and that's coming in part two of this uh, section. All right, so let's go to part two of this video.